it's a cliche, but it's true. Many technically minded radio amateurs are great at designing and building things, but not in putting it down in an article to inspire others to follow their footsteps. In this era of daily blogs and videos, it's too easy to forget about magazines, the way that many radio amateurs documented and shared their work. Coming out between 4 and 12 times a year, magazines can reach anywhere between a few tens of people to thousands of readers. They can be anything from a few stapled pages put out by a radio club to a professionally produced colour publication from a major national radio society. No matter the size of their publication, their editors tell me they're crying out for materials. Now there's things about these magazines that we took for granted 30 years ago, but which seem quaint in this instant online age. For instance, the lead time. Depending on editing time, drafting time and available space, an article can take 2 to 12 months to appear. And as alluded to before, the editing process. This adds time, but is somewhat reassuring since even the best writers make silly errors or reverse a diode in a circuit. Errors in magazines certainly appear, but hopefully printed material is more reliable than some circuits you see on the web. But despite, or possibly because of the weight, there's still the buzz of seeing something you wrote in print. Maybe with fewer print publications now, this will assume increased rather than decreased prestige. Without distracting hyperlinks or multiple pages open, it's possibly easier to hold the reader's attention than through a website article. There's also something to be said for a printed article when trying to explain a concept or show a circuit. A paper magazine is probably easier to precariously place on a cluttered workbench than a heavier iPad or laptop. Permanence is another benefit. People have been known to delete their websites without notice. And will everything that's on YouTube still be there in 20 years? Whereas, unless your house burns down, you'll have a magazine article for years. To summarise all this, magazines are good, and radio magazines are even better. If you build something, you should submit your experiences as an article. If nothing else, that causes you to document it, which could be handy years later. So, how do you do it? The first thing is to read other articles that people have written in that same magazine. That gives you an idea as to the style and article length expected. Many QRP magazines are small format. You typically need a circuit diagram, one or two photos and a page or two of notes. Use more words if writing for a larger format magazine like QST or if your audience is likely to include more beginners. Long articles can be split across issues. What should you write about? Antenna topics never seem to bore people. I find that magnetic loops, N-fed wire antennas and small antenna couplers are really popular in my videos and also articles that I write. It seems that readers can't get enough of them. Even if something appears very similar to what you wrote a few years ago, there's always a new crop of people wanting to lap it up. Simple transmitters and receivers are also popular. Even if you design it yourself, or you took someone else's design and made a few small changes here and there, people still like to read about it. Even a kit, a kit review can make a great article. When writing about books or kits, please make your article useful even to the person who doesn't go ahead and buy it. You can do this by talking about the design approach or similar circuits that you see that can be built from scratch. That will give the article a much bigger audience and make it more interesting. OK, so you've got an idea on something you've just bought or built. How do you make it into an article? The simplest is just to draw a circuit diagram and annotate. Not just the component values, but a few other considerations as well. That can work for a small magazine like Sprat or Lowkey. And also, especially for the experience builder, that may be all they need. In most other cases though, it's helpful to add a few paragraphs of notes. If you're in doubt, editors tell me they'd rather receive something and knock it into shape than to get nothing at all and be staring at the bottom of the barrel 
before the next issue of the magazine. As for a format for the article, I suggest the following, which has worked well for me. First of all, the introduction. What the project is, why you built it, and what it does. Draw attention to particular features, like small size and low cost, which drove you to construct it. Secondly, how it works. Depending on the article, a couple of lines, or a more detailed stage-by-stage -stage description. If there are particular oddities or innovations, then describe those in a bit more detail. Thirdly, where you get the parts. If you don't describe that, then that can be a deal breaker for those with shallow junk boxes. Fourthly, the nuts and bolts of how to build it and things to watch out for. Things like winding toroids, which a lot of people don't like, or particular features like orientation of stages and components are things that you might want to discuss. For instance, it's not a good idea to be having a hot final amplifier stage in a transmitter right next to a variable frequency oscillator due to the added instability that could cause. Five is testing and adjusting it. Include troubleshooting tips if it's a particularly complex project. And six, how do you actually use it and tips for getting the best success from it. You might also want to suggest things that readers can do to make the project smaller, cheaper or better. These are six points for describing a project in an article. Follow them and you won't go wrong. They apply for simple or complex projects, short or long articles. As for circuit diagrams, these can be a pain. The crudest is just to draw it on a bit of paper and send it in, or take a digital photo of it and email it. Just make sure the diagram is clear, and things like crossing wires, those that just cross and do not connect on the diagram, versus those that actually make a connection, are clearly differentiated. Also, show component values right near the symbol for the part, and have it in a position on the page that doesn't confuse readers. Another approach, a bit more sophisticated, is to use the MS Paint program that comes with your computer. That can take a long time, is a bit tedious, but it can produce good diagrams. You might want to save time by making up templates for common components that you use in a diagram. For instance, transistors, resistors, capacitors, diodes and so forth. Then you can just cut and paste and be able to do quite complex diagrams reasonably quickly. Then there are dedicated drafting packages, which is what the real pros use. You can even get some for free. I've used, although not for electronic purposes, one called Inkscape, which I found great. As for photos, well these are better taken than something other than your mobile phone. Although, if you've got nothing else, do that anyway. You obviously want to send something that can be emailed, so it can't be too big or too small. But if you do have a big version, then don't delete it. The editor might ask you to submit it as a cover photo. I've assumed you're writing a review or construction project. But that's not the only thing that people like to read about. An on-air experience, like a portable operating trip, can add variety to the magazine. A photo and a couple of paragraphs is all that's needed for that. Or maybe you've got onto a new mode, had some teething problems, but are now experiencing success. Again, that's something others will want to read about. Some who might otherwise write an article might think they don't have the technical qualifications or expertise to write it. Don't let that be a barrier. That's what technical editors are for. Technicians or engineers, although they might know a lot, can be handicapped by skipping over concepts that are second nature to them, but not to other readers. That's something that even if your background is not radio, you might be able to cover and your article will be the better for it. As for writing style, short and direct sentences are good, a bit like this video. It's helpful to sit on the article for a few days and give it a final review before you send it off. It's surprising the number of things you don't pick up at the time, but you do later on. Not having the time is a common reason people give for not writing. Maybe you've got a family. Are there times that you're waiting in the car for other people to get back from their shopping or sport. Maybe you can snatch those moments as thinking and writing time. Make sure you carry a laptop with you and you'll never be lost when those moments may unexpectedly appear. Similar comments also apply to those with long bus or train commutes. Wherever you write your articles, your readers will thank and appreciate you for doing it. 
more people say they're going to build, buy or try something than actually doing it. Your article could be the trigger they need to get them moving. You'll get many comments and in fact that's one of the most rewarding things about writing an article for a magazine. This makes it all worthwhile. I look forward to seeing something from you soon in a QRP or radio magazine.